So for 5, 6, we're going to talk about uh, integrals that contain exponential and logarithmic functions. But the first thing I wanted to remind you is how to find their derivatives. Because if you can't remember how to find the derivative, then this becomes difficult. So remember that um, if you're taking the derivative of a natural log, that it's 1 over x. Okay. Now, if it's not a natural log, but if it is a um, uh, some other base log, so, so let's say it's a log base b of x, because of the change of base formula, you get the 1 over x, but you do have to multiply that by the natural log of b. It's basically from the change of base. Some other things to remember. Let's say we have the natural log with a function inside. And we're taking the derivative of that. It's the chain rule. So it is 1 over the function times the derivative of the function. Okay? 1 over the function times the derivative. So there's just some basic rules you might have forgotten about the logarithm's derivative, okay? Because we're going to have to undo this. Next, remember that the derivative of b to the x is just b to the x. That's great. That's always a nice one. If we change the base and we take its derivative, um, it just stays b to the x, but kind of because of the change of base form, we're going to have it times a natural log of b. That's the only difference. So that's the same thing that kind of happens with a, uh, a different base um, up above. And then remember, if it is e with a function inside, we got to do the chain rule. So it's the derivative of the function times b with the original function in its power. So those six things are going to play a part in everything that we do um, when we undo these. So it's really important. That's why I just wanted to take a moment to kind of touch base um, about what those formulas were because, you know, they're, they're a little bit weird. They're not particularly difficult. They're just kind of something you want to remember. Okay, now, now that we do that, let's think about going backwards. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. So, if we need to go backwards, and it's an exponential function, well, going backwards from e to the x, uh, will be e to the x. It's because they go forward and backwards perfectly. But if you have a uh, base that is different, so before, for the derivative, we multiply by the natural log of that number. So in order to undo it, you have to divide by the natural log of that number. So that's the only difference. So if you look up here, look. Here we multiplied by the natural log of whatever the base was. Here we divided by the natural log. So it's just going to undo that rule, okay? And if it is a um, indefinite integral, just like uh, we had done before, um, put that plus C on. If it's a definite integral, we're going to take the upper bound plugged in minus the lower bound plugged in. So let's just practice. Now here we have for the first time um, an uh, antiderivative. So we're just kind of practicing doing that antiderivative. And so uh, remember, if you have an e to the negative x, um, we're going to do a little bit of a u substitution. So let's write it in integral form. 
So um, uh, let's make our, this is like our f of x. So that is usually your u that you're going to use. And then our du is going to be negative 1. Now we don't have a negative 1 in the problem, so we're going to move it to the other side with the du. So now we have a perfect substitution. dx gets replaced with negative 1 du. Negative x gets replaced with u. So let's do that substitution. So we have a negative 1 is going to go out front. You can just put a negative symbol if you're really happy with it. And then it's going to be e to the u. And then we know what e to the u becomes. It just stays in e to the u. So that's going to be negative e to the u plus c. And then uh, for our final result, let's stick our uh, u value back in. So remember, u is negative x. So just replace it in, and we're done. So it's negative e to the negative x. So u substitutions are going to be, you know, something we will, we will see happen. Everybody good with 537? Let's look at this one. Let's do the integral of e to the x. And then I'm going to clean it up a little bit and use some of the techniques we have done before. I'm going to write a square root as a one-half power. Now, just like any other function, we always ask ourselves, what seems to be stuck? And so this seems to be our function that is stuck. And is its derivative living somewhere in the problem? Of course it is. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. I see an e to the x. And so let's make our u 1 plus e to the x, because then our derivative is e to the x dx. Now we have a perfect e to the x dx. So these two things here get replaced with du. So that's just our du. And then our other thing gets replaced with u. So it's u to the x. And we've started to see the, the pattern to go backwards with the u to the 1 half pretty quickly. You're going to stick that 2 thirds out in front, and it's going to become u to the 3. Now, because this is an indefinite integral, um, we don't have any bounds, so don't forget the plus c. And then our final version has to have the x's back in. So let's stick our x's back in. So it's 1 plus e to the x. One way to check our work is we could do the derivative of this. We should get what we see right here. If you don't get what you see right there, you've done something wrong. Does anybody have questions about 538? OK. 539. You might notice here um, we've got this function up in E. So remember, that's usually an indication of what your U is going to be when you evaluate that. And then I ask myself, if I did that derivative, that derivative is 6x squared. So some multiple is living in there. So, so I'm, I'm on the right track. Okay, So I'm going to let my U equal the, the power. And that's usually for an uh, exponential uh, antiderivative. That's usually the direction to take. So our du is 6x squared dx. Now, I don't see a 6x squared dx. I see a 3x squared dx. So what could we multiply a 6 by to turn it into a 3? Yeah, so we're just going to multiply both sides by 1 half. We're going to trick it to be what we want. So whatever you have to multiply both sides by to turn that front coefficient into what you want, that's the trick. And so we get 1 half du is 3x squared dx. Now we have a perfect match with what's in the problem. So we're going to take out the 3x squared dx, replace it with 1 half du. We're going to take out the power and replace it with the u. So we get the integral of 1 half e to the u du. Now, once you find that, the great part about taking this antiderivative is it's so nice. It's just 
pink will go backwards. So it's just one half U plus C. Put your U back in. You got it. U is 2x cubed. That's one half E to the 2x cubed plus C. How could we check it? Well, if we took the derivative of this, we should get what's living on there. At there. And think about the derivative of this is 1 half times 6x squared times e to the 2x cubed. So it matches it perfectly. Any questions about 539? Okay. Let's look at 541. Now, for the first time, we have a definite integral. So just have some bounds to plug in. But we know how to do this for now. But I'm going to do a little trick. I am going to um, uh, change the boundaries to, to, uh, to use. But we'll do that in a second. OK, let's do the same thing that we have been doing. Our u is the power. Our du is negative 1 dx. I don't see a negative 1 uh, on uh, the, the problem. So I am going to pull the negative 1 to the other side. Now I have my substitution, so I'm going to ignore the bounds. Actually, let's not, not ignore the bounds. Let me, let me show you something, a trick you can do. If x is 1, because the lower bound is 1, what's 1 minus 1? Yeah, so wouldn't u be 0? If x is 2, what is u? That's my boundary. So that can be your new boundary, and then you never have to deal with x's ever again. So that is one thing that's nice. Um, do you see how our upper bound is lower than our lower bound? We learned a rule you might have forgotten, that we are allowed to flip the boundaries as long as we flip the sign. So wouldn't this be the same as negative 1 to 0 of u, e to the u dx? So now we've even made it easier on ourselves, right? We are allowed to flip the boundaries as long as we flip the sign in front. OK, so this is just e to the u, plug in negative 1 and 0. So it's going to be e to the 0 minus e to the negative 1, which is 1 minus 1 over 2. Now, I don't know exactly what that is. So, you know, leave it when your answer, it's just like if our answer had a pi in it, we would leave a pi. If our answer ends up with an e in it, I'll just leave an e, and that's a, a perfect, because that is our exact result. Now, if you didn't like changing the boundaries to be u, you can do what we've always done, get the antiderivative, put the x's back in, and use the original bounds, and it would work perfectly fine. Any questions about 541? Okay. So, we've undone some exponentials. Now let's talk about undoing some uh, logarithmic functions. So this one basically says that if you have a 1 over x inside there, when you undo it, you get the natural log of the absolute value of x. Now, the reason they put the absolute value on there is because um, they didn't kind of give a definite boundary. We can only plug positive numbers into a natural log. So that just kind of forces it to work and be positive. So if you forget to put the absolute values in there, I'm not going to hold it against you. It'll be fine. But now, it's a little bit harder when we're undoing a natural log. We've got a brand new formula here. You can write it like that, or you can write it like that. When you're undoing a natural log that's inside there, um, you have a brand new formula. So we've never uh, gone backwards with a natural. We've never got something that if we took the derivative, we get a natural log. So, so that's a brand new, brand new spanking new thing. And then if we have a log base a, just like before, you know, you had to divide by that natural log. Uh, that's what happens there. 
it's the same formula as above. So I think it's better maybe if we write this. Well, I mean, see this formula right here? They just divided by natural log of A. That's the only difference. I am not super concerned about this version of it. Um, make sure you know these two. This we won't use as often. Probably can't actually today, but, <laughs> but we can definitely look at one of those. Okay, so uh, definitely know the first formula, the second and third formula. And like I said, we're not going to use it a whole heck of a lot, but, but definitely know how to undo the first. Okay, so let's look at this. This is going to require us to actually use a U substitution. Um, so let's talk about what we have to do. Anytime you see your x is to the first power in a denominator, you always want to think of natural log. It's some kind of logarithm, okay? So what we're going to do here, what I suggest doing when we do the integral, let's take the 3 out front. Let's let it look like that, okay? Because we know that the derivative of a natural log is 1 over x, so that 1 over x minus 10 is going to be very helpful. Now, let's do a little u substitution here. Let's let u equal whatever that x is that's in our denominator. Because we want it to say 1 over u. We don't want it to say 1 over u plus or minus something. And then we get that du is just dx. So the substitution goes 1 over u du, which is just a formula. That's the natural log of u. We'll put it in the absolute bar just to be more precise. And then we just stick our, uh, our u back in. So that's 3 times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus two. Now, there are some things. We can't have x is not allowed to equal 10, because that would make that value um, undefined. Really, technically, you could even go as further if you just left it x minus 10. You could even say that uh, x minus 10 has to be a positive, so greater than 0. Is that what we have to do with c4? Um, the C just said that there could have been a plus 7 there that we didn't know about because remember when you took the derivative of that, it disappears. So that's just kind of an extra way of saying, hey, any constant that I deleted, it could have been there. Okay. Let's take a look at this one. Do you see how this power is exactly one higher than this power? That is a good indication that you have a natural log uh, in your answer. It's, it's going to be a logarithm of some sort. Okay, So again, if the bottom is exactly one more power than the top, that's what you look for, that this is probably going to be a natural log. That's the thing that's stuck. And this time, it's where is it stuck? It's stuck in the denominator. So let u equal that thing that's stuck in your denominator. So our du is going to be 4x cubed plus 6x dx. Okay, now let's take a look at our integration for a minute. So we have the x to the fourth plus 3x squared. The denominator is taken care of. That's our u. But do we have an exact match? For our, do we see that exact thing right here? What do we do to make these two things match? Multiply, by one half. multiply it again by one half. So that's a trick, remember. So we're going to multiply both sides by one half.
And so then we get one half du is a perfect replacement for the 2x cubed plus 3x uh, dx in the problem. So sometimes you have to do that to get it to do exactly what you want. So we're going to take the 1 half. It's going to be 1 over u. Now 1 over u, we know how to go backwards. That's a natural log. But just put the natural log of the absolute value of u, just so we're fixing any negatives we're trying to plug in. And then our final answer puts the u back in. So it's 1 half natural of the absolute value of x to the fourth plus 3x. Now we don't actually need an absolute value on this one because it, no matter what we, any real number we plug in, x to the fourth plus 3x squared is always a positive value. So uh, we don't necessarily need the absolute value on this one, but uh, we'll just put it there just to get in the habit. Any questions about 546? Let's look at 547. Do you want to skip 547? Well, I'll show it to you. Again, it is not my intention. I'm going to focus on a standard 1 over x is my main one for logarithms. It really is. But let me, let me just show you how you do this. So if we're doing the uh, integral of the log base 2 of x. Now, it's a log base 2. So one thing you can do is you can change that to using the change of base formula. But basically, there's just a formula that undoes it. Okay? And the formula is um, that is going to be x over the natural log of 2 times the natural log of x minus 1. So I am not super concerned with knowing knowing that formula. I, I just am not, uh, I don't know, but, <laughs> so, but you have those formulas to use. Let's do one more, and then we'll talk about the homework. Okay, so, um, to find the definite integral, we have boundaries, which is good. Um, I think changing these boundaries from u's to x's will probably not be great, but we'll figure it out. Okay, so use uh, going to be the denominator. Remember, usually when you see the denominator, something stuck to the first power and its derivative is living in the problem, it, we're going to end up dealing with the natural log. Um, the du is going to be negative sine of x. Do we have a negative in our problem? So move it to the other side. And then let's do our substitution. Now, let's see if we actually put in <coughs> our bounds. We can do that. Uh, the cosine of pi over 2, if we stick in pi over 2, the cosine of pi over 2 is 0, plus 1 is 1. If we stick in 0, the cosine of 0 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. It did flip it around. But that's okay. okay, so we're going to get uh, negative 1. And then 1 over uh, u du. Um, because our boundaries are, are uh, opposite, let's flip them and change the sign. Yeah, I, said, <laughs> I said that and I didn't. Let's make that 1 and 2. And 1 over u du. So that's just the natural log of the absolute value of u from 1 to 2. Now we've changed the boundaries to be u's. Instead of 0 and pi over 2, I stuck 0 and pi over 2 into this to find out the correct boundaries. And now I just get to plug it in. So that's just the natural log of 2 minus the natural log of 1. Now the natural log of 1 is just uh, a natural log or any logarithm of 1 is always 0. So that's just the natural log of 2 minus 0, which is the natural log of 2. I think that's an interesting kind of answer. When you think about the natural log of 0 power, there's 1 there. Yeah, that's exactly what it comes from. Anything with 0 power is 1, and so that's how that works out. Okay.
the assignment, um, can you guys tell me, go into Google Classroom and tell me what it says, because that's what we want to do. We're going to use the yellow book. And what does it say? <laughs> what does Google Classroom tell you? Wait, wait, wait. I'm not as fast as you are. Let's see. What was the page? 605. 605. And then it was odds. What was it? 321 to 341. And then 341 to 316. Okay. Um, so you're in uh, the yellow book. The odds that you see there. If there are any that are funky ones that end up using a natural, I'll give them a shot. But I am mostly concerned. And so uh, that would be your assignment. Okay. Notice when we go into these annotations, we want to take you out. 